All right, so a while back, I created this custom GPT, a kind of prompt engineer, for the community. And as you can see, OpenArt took it down, and honestly, I still don't know why. I appealed a few times and heard nothing back. The weird part is, there was nothing sketchy in it. It was super popular while it lasted. So many of you found it useful, and I was using it literally every day. So I figured, why not show you how to build it yourself? That way, you can use it without dealing with all these random restrictions. All right, so on your GPT page, you'll wanna head up to your profile icon at the top. Click that, then choose My GPTs, and from there, click Create New GPT. That'll bring up a display that's split into two parts. On the left side, you build your custom GPT, and on the right side, you can test it out. You'll be going back and forth between these two panes until you're happy with how it performs. First up, give your GPT a name. In my case, I'm going to call it Prompt Boss 2. Then, write a short description. After that, head over to our community page, copy the prompt we're using, and paste it right into the instructions field. And hey, while you're at it, you can even click here to add a nice little logo. Let's update that too for a polished look. Next up, let's talk about the starter messages. If you look at the original, you'll see those little boxes with sample messages. They're basically quick start prompts to help kick things off. Now, if you're planning to publish this GPT for others, make sure these messages are genuinely helpful. But if it's just for you, feel free to add the ones you use most often. To add them, just scroll to the conversation starters section. Let's go ahead and add the first one, then a couple more for good measure. After that, we need to upload the knowledge base. This can be any type of file you want your GPT to refer to when answering questions. Head back to the community page. I've uploaded the official GPT prompt engineering document there. Download it, then upload it right here into your knowledge base. Now it's time to choose the capabilities. Ask yourself, does this GPT need web search, canvas, image generation, or anything else? All right, now it's time to test it out. On the right-hand side, down at the bottom, you've got the chat. This is exactly how your GPT will function once it's published. Go ahead and type in your prompt. Let's try something like, create a prompt for video generation in VO3, based on a basic idea the user provides. Hit enter, and let's see what it comes up with. And as you can see, it generates a prompt, explains why it chose that specific format based on the document, and then gives you a ready-to-use version right at the bottom. All you have to do is copy it, and you're good to go. Drop it straight into your workflows or agents. Perfect. All right, next step. Click on the Create button. After that, you'll be asked to choose who can access your GPT. Just you, anyone with the link, or you can publish it to the GPT store. Last time, I went with the anyone with the link option so it was available just to our community. I also tried publishing it to the GPT store but for some mysterious reason, OpenAI took it down. So select just for myself. Click Save, and you'll get a link that you can copy if you want to share it later. Then hit View GPT, and there it is. Your brand new custom GPT all set up, ready to roll. Now you know how to create your very own custom GPTs. If you're not yet a member of our community, come and join us. You'll find the link down in the description. We've got a free group that anyone can join, and we also have a special members-only club. Inside, you'll get access to all kinds of templates and automations ready to download. Go ahead and give us a like if you found this helpful. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of the new content coming your way. Thanks for watching.